I bet. What's up, everybody? It's Chef Candice, and yes, I am back with another YouTube video. Y'all know I had to come out of my hiatus on YouTube with some Thanksgiving content, and I'm going to show you guys how to make the juiciest foolproof turkey recipe on this internet. We all know that turkey typically gets a bad rep every year because it's super dry. I'm talking about drier than some edges after a relaxer. Look, I know, but this recipe is going to make the juiciest turkey. It's injected with Cajun butter. It's basted all throughout being put in the oven, y'all. You cannot not mess this up and look at that brown skin this ain't no light skin turkey okay this is a nice sexy brown sugar d'angelo from the 2000s looking turkey okay stop playing so i'm going to show you guys from start to finish how to brine the turkey how to inject it with cajun butter how to add a beautiful layer of rub on it so it's nice flavorful and seasoned all throughout okay we don't want no bland turkey for thanksgiving so before we get into the video make sure you like comment subscribe and turn on that notification bell and without further ado let's get into it So first things first, I'm going to show you guys the turkey I got. I got a 14 pound turkey from Publix for $7. I was super shocked. And the rest of the ingredients I'm going to show right now, I wanted to make my turkey as juicy as possible. So I'm going to use some Cajun butter that I found, I think at Publix as well, or Kroger. It's some Cajun butter by Zatarain's. And I'm also showing you um, the other things that I have, which is some turkey base, because I didn't actually end up using that Tony's. But if you want to use some Cajun seasoning, I would use the Tony's. Tony's Spice and Herbs and Tony's uh, Extra Seasoning one. So this is the Better Than Bouillon brand. It's what I use whenever I need to use like broth because it's more concentrated, it's more seasoned. So you don't wanna overuse that because it will make a dish very salty since it's more flavorful than your typical chicken broths. So use that in moderation. And then right here we have my brine and rub kit. You can use whichever type of brine that you can find. You can make it homemade. You can get uh, whichever brand that you trust. I trust Kinders with my life. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. It comes with a rub. It comes with the recipe. It comes with instructions and measurements, precise measurements at that. And of course, it's going to come with flavor because y'all know that Kinder's is going to have that flavor on deck. Then I'm going to use a turkey baster. So throughout the process, we're going to make sure that we baste the turkey so it retains all of that juice and doesn't lose none of that moisture or that juice and keeps all that flavor locked in. So in this step, you guys see me preparing the brine. So what a brine does for a turkey or poultry for that matter is retain all of that moisture inside of the bird because we all know that a turkey and stuff like chicken that we also brine for like fried chicken or roast chicken tends to dry out during the cooking process. So a brine, um, you know, I, correct me if I'm using the wrong terminology, acts as like a marinade to me. It's going to lock in all that moisture so we don't have no dry bird and ain't nobody fighting on Thanksgiving, ain't nobody experimenting, all that. So for my brine, I am not going to use water as Kinder's recommended. I'm going to use turkey base from Better Than Bouillon. Um, they have plenty of different other flavors if you don't want turkey base or you can't find it. They have sauteed onion, they have roasted garlic, they have chicken broth, they have low sodium and organic versions as well. And as you guys can see, I'm using the one teaspoon to eight ounces or one teaspoon to one cup of water. And I'm using very hot water and I'm adding in the teaspoons at the bottom of a measuring cup and adding in water little by little and I'm whisking it at first so I can make sure there's no lumps because if there's lumps it's probably not going to have as much flavor as if it's dissolved and you do it with this method so just add a little bit of the paste at the um, bottom and then add in some really hot water whisk that and then add in the remaining amount of water that you need so I used 18 cups of broth I diluted it I did about like nine cups of concentrated turkey based broth and I cut it with some um, more hot water then I'm just adding in the rest of my things I'm adding in the brine package I'm adding in some soy sauce I actually used uh, coconut aminos I'm adding in all of my aromatics some celery some lemons some oranges some onions um, carrots I'm adding all that in with the brine mixture and stirring that and bringing that to a boil and I also added in some brown sugar to balance all of these flavors 
flavors out so we have a really super flavorful broth and we add in those fresh herbs i'm adding some poultry herbs like rosemary thyme oregano and sage all of those are fresh and i added all those in i wish you guys could smell this this is going to be so delicious with our bird so with the brine we're going to allow that to cool down um you can add ice to that to make it come down to room temperature i just put it in my fridge um overnight so it could be nice and cold for the morning even though you can just do it room temperature then all i'm doing is cleaning my bird here my sink is completely clean ignore the little stains in the sink those are clean i promise it's <laughs> there's a part of the sink and all you see me doing right here is taking my bird out of the packaging i'm cleaning it and scrubbing it with a lime i used about like four to six lines to clean this bird is 14 pounds and i'm also getting under the skin carefully like don't do it like me like i'm in prison or something and i just scrubbed it with some sea salt you can use kosher salt or whatever type of salt that you have and i'm scrubbing it to all that slime and nasty blood is off and also make sure to reach inside of your turkey cavity and get out the turkey neck get out the giblets get off any extra skin that you don't want on your bird i cut off the little tail um and any extra skin that was there and inside this plastic you want to make sure all of this is out because you can use this for turkey gravy for turkey broth make your own broth at home for dressing for turkey gravy etc etc um and just make sure inside of the cavity there's nothing in there remove the plastic piece from the turkey all that stuff needs to come off any plastic and anything else that was inside so now that our turkey is perfectly clean we're going to place it inside of the large brining bag that was provided to us by kinder so this was in the kinder's brining package and off camera you see that i carefully poured in the cold uh brine that we made uh, we let it sit in the fridge overnight or just let it cool down um, until it's completely room temperature and i carefully added it in the bag i did all of this in the sink and i used the rubber band also provided by kinders and tied it into a nice knot to make sure it was secure now i'm going to place my turkey inside of this full-size catering pan that i had if you have another container maybe like a roasting pan you could do that as well and we're going to move this from our sink and we're going to transfer it to our refrigerator and let that sit overnight for about 12 to 24 hours i did 24 hours when that's done we're going to take that out and we're going to release all of that brine from inside of the turkey bag and we're going to go ahead and clean our sink um after this step so yeah we just let our brine sit um with our turkey and get married get acquainted overnight i did 24 hours for this video um to repeat and now we're going to go ahead and inject our turkey with some cajun butter so we already have a super ju juicy turkey just from that brine that we made and it's super flavorful because we use turkey base um instead of just water i don't make anything with just water everything gonna have some type of broth so i'm following the packaging instructions to um, do this cajun injection you can also make your own uh creole butter um you know that's a super easy recipe i'm sure you can find that on youtube as well if you like that recipe for me then let me know and all i did was lubricate the um tip of the needle pause and i um absorbed all of it following the packaging instructions um to get the right amount of injection into my needle so i used about half of this bottle but they do instruct you to pour some of it into the bowl so in case you do want to reuse the jar you're not cross contaminating it so put it in a bowl for however much you know you're going to need you can always adjust it and do not inject the raw meat needle back into the jar because you know cross contamination you know people can get sick like that so um so i did um I gave my turkey like a nice little BBL with this Creole butter. I injected it into the breast. I really focused on the areas that tend to be super dry. So I injected it into the breast, the thighs. I injected it into the drums, the wings. I injected it pretty much all over the turkey. Um, following the package instructions again, um, just until it was nice and bloated and thick like that, but not thicker than me. <laughs> so now you see my aromatics that I'm going to be stuffing inside of my turkey. If you would like during this step, you can put inside some homemade stuffing or use whatever aromatics that you like to use. I'm using some garlic. I'm using some fresh sage, thyme, rosemary, and oregano, some lemons, um, some shallots instead of onions, and I'm also doing some oranges. So I'm putting all of that inside, pretty much the same ingredients that we put inside of our brine, and I'm going to take some kitchen twine and tie together our drums to make sure we have great presentation. And now it's time to season. So I'm using Rochelle's Creative Dishes, the lavender collection. You can find that via the link in my bio to purchase yours. The ones you see me using on this turkey is lavender sea salt i'm using lavender lemon pepper and i'm also using lavender cajun so these are super flavorful super unique flavor profile with these seasoning blends you can purchase them once again from michelle's creative dishes and i'm also going to be using the buttery poultry blend from kinders and some spain smoked paprika spanish smoked paprika 
<laughs> so we want this turkey to be super seasoned all throughout so season it until it looks like this nice and colored and beautiful because we want a nice brown skin turkey like d'angelo from the early 2000s remember not maxwell from the early 2000s we want it like d'angelo and you want it to be nice and seasoned all throughout i'm using some plastic gloves to massage all of the seasonings in along with some brown sugar to balance out all the savoriness of the turkey why because brown sugar just pairs really well with any type of poultry so trust me on that tip i'm massaging all of that in before we go on to the next step which is preparing our roasting pan to the roasting pan i'm adding some more turkey uh broth so i'm doing about four cups uh just enough to fill the bottom of your roasting pan so we can have a nice gravy to make after i'm adding about half a stick of butter some carrots, some garlic, some fresh sage, oregano, thyme, and rosemary. Some more oranges and some lemons if you like, and some shallots. I'm going to put down the roasting rack and carefully lay down my turkey. It's pretty heavy, so do be careful. And I'm laying it down uh, breast side up so we can get that beautiful presentation. I'm tucking the wings so they don't burn in the oven. So uh, make sure you tuck the wings so they don't get all crispy. And look at that lavender collection glistening on that bird, y'all. It's beautiful. So I'm going to place the turkey on the bottom rack of the oven. The oven is preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to cook this turkey for a total of about 15 to 30 minutes per pound. And we're also going to be basting the turkey with the turkey baster and the liquids at the bottom of the pan uh, every 30 minutes to make sure the turkey is nice and juicy. So my turkey was a little bit under 14 and a half pounds. So I cooked mine for about three and a half to four hours. So after about an hour and a half, I decided to uncover the turkey with the foil because I was like, why isn't my turkey browning? So I took the foil off after an hour and a half, rotated my turkey and allowed it to continue cooking for another hour and a half to two hours until we got this beautiful color. And remember once again, to get that nice juicy, and brown skin turkey we need to be basting every 30 minutes so set an alarm on your phone or a timer uh, for every 30 minutes every 30 minutes to make sure you are basting your turkey so here's a nice slow-mo shot y'all oh my god it's just so good and it was just so golden brown and just crispy crust and so juicy on the inside so anyways um in between that time you should have time to clean your sink of all the nasty turkey juice and also have time to wash your hands um so always make sure you're washing your surfaces when you are doing stuff like cleaning with raw meat and other things like that so i'm just showing you guys how i disinfect my work area just to make sure you guys are doing the same when you're cooking for a group of people i'm adding some baking soda some sea salt um in my sink drain after i disinfected it with some clorox i'm adding in some florida water some essential oils lavender and citrus and filling it with some vinegar i only had red wine vinegar and i'm just running that with some hot water down the drain so it's nice and fragrant that's going to detox your drain um and then even though i just finished cleaning it i decided to clean the counters and finish washing the rest of my dishes <laughs> So yes, after you're done uh, cleaning your workspace, disposing of any things that you are not using, you know, make sure you clean as you go. We are going to be rounding up on the last 30 minutes of our turkey. So once again, I roasted my 14 and a half pound turkey um, in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about three and a half to four hours. So in that last 30 minutes of the cooking time, when your turkey is starting to look like this, we're going to baste it one last time all over the turkey we're going to get the legs we're going to get the drums we're going to get the wings we're going to get the breasts we're going to get the thighs we're going to get the inside the outside all of that we are aiming for a final product of a golden brown skin turkey juicy aromatic filled with so much flavor and look at that crust on that turkey y'all look at that skin not the crust i apologize <laughs> look at that brown skin on that turkey from the lavender collection okay the information to purchase that is via the link in my bio it's smoking hot we have all of these delicious pan drippings that we're going to use for a turkey gravy and once again, y'all, I know that turkey usually gets a bad rep during the holidays because it's known to be dry or bland. But let me tell y'all, I made sure it was nice, juicy, and flavorful. And I'm also using my Mr. Make It Happen digital thermometer to make sure that ain't nobody getting sick at Thanksgiving. So you can purchase that also via the link in my description as well. So now I'm carefully carving my turkey to show you how flavorful and juicy this bird is, y'all. Like the breast wasn't even dry. I could taste all of the lavender lemon pepper throughout the bird. I could taste the herb the citrus the butter the turkey broth all of that goodness the brine did its job that basting trick did its job every 30 minutes and y'all after four hours you get a delicious turkey and you also get an amazing gravy with it i cannot emphasize to y'all enough that this is going to be an amazing thanksgiving especially when you use this recipe so if you like what you see and you decide that you're confident enough to make your first beautiful brown skin turkey 
make sure that you like comment and subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell also my newest holiday ebook is out now uh, 22 recipes to be grateful for and i'm so excited for you guys to try it and see what all i have in store for you guys and my hardcover is coming soon don't worry i got y'all follow me on instagram and tiktok all that is linked in my description down below and also comment below what else you would like to see me make this holiday season i'm going to be back active on youtube i promise and i have so much more in the vault from my family to yours i'm wishing you a happy thanksgiving and you know what's good because i made it stop playing